Good morning. So this morning, I want to give the third lecture about Gasho. And the final talk, at least for this cycle, about Gasho. OK, so the uh, text that we're talking about is a text that Dogen wrote on how to do Oriyoki. And in that text, in the Ehe Shingi, he discusses how to do Gasho. And so this is the quote that we're talking about. Put your hands perfectly together, palm against palm. There should be no space between the fingers, and they should be fully extended. The tips of your fingers should align with the bottom of your nose. Make about one fist space between your nose and thumbs that this is the rule when you move your head the tips of your fingers should always be in direct alignment with the motions of your head you must bend the upper body from the lower back as your head goes lower your gasho mudra goes lower so in the previous two talks the first one i talked about the meaning of put your hands perfectly together and the second one was about the meaning of when he said, this is the rule. Uh, so what does that mean to talk about something being perfect and about rules? And I want to kind of go over that again a little bit in relationship to uh, how we make our best effort. And Dogen often calls this concentrated effort. So how do we make concentrated effort in practice and how do we make concentrated effort while doing gasho? And what does it mean to talk about something being perfect and to talk about rules? So when we think about the word perfect, we think it means that there is some pure way or state that cannot be improved upon. And attaining that state or that way implies that there is a good way to do something and a bad way to do something. And that when we attain this good way, that it's always correct. But in Zen, we say things are perfect just as they are. So what that means is the world is always making its best effort. So the question is not, am I perfect? But rather is it, the question should be something like, am I making my best effort, my concentrated effort in each moment and in each interaction? So from that perspective, you don't need to worry about being perfect. What you want to do is make sure that you make your best effort and that that effort reflects your deepest vow. What Suzuki Roshi called uh, the inmost request. So a week or so ago, here in the Zendo, I was interacting with a student on how to correctly do standing gasho. And that person said, I know I'm not a good Zen student. And I replied, you're a great Zen student. And this person is a great Zen student, as all, are all of you, because you are making your best effort. So the point here about doing the forms is not to do them right or wrong in the sense that this is a criteria for whether or not you are a good or a bad Zen student. I think the true meaning of being a Zen student, period, is that we're always making our best effort in every activity. And it isn't about how it looks like to somebody else from the outside, even though our teachers may correct us and tell us that there is a particular way that they want us to do something. So the point here is to continuously make your best effort to follow the precepts and learn the deportment for every situation. And then I would say we are good Zen students. So please make your best effort. Now, Suzuki Roshi said, the point is not to be perfect in and of itself. 
but to be aware of our imperfect practice that is itself an expression of our inmost request. If you understand it in this way, then that is right understanding. So he said, the point is not to be perfect in and of itself. So that's not the point of our practice, to somehow be perfect. But to be aware of our imperfect practice, that is itself an expression of our inmost request. So I think what he's saying here is that we make our best effort to do whatever it is that we're doing in practice, whether that effort is to gasho or participate in the mandala of service, or whether that effort is to relate to your neighbors, or whether that effort is what you're doing at the grocery store, whatever it might be. So, and we're aware of the fact when we perhaps are not making our best effort, or when we fall short in that effort. But that we know that that effort regardless is still, a re is still a reflection of our inmost request. And now the question of inmost request is, what is your deepest vow? What is your deepest vow? And you have to be specific about it. You can't generally say something to yourself like, I wanna save all beings. Like that's kind of meaningless. So there's this way in which we have to ask ourselves, which is not part of this lecture, but ask ourselves, what is my inmost request? What do I most, do I, is my inmost request to work on patience so I can be more compassionate? Is my inmost request to what? So I think that's an important question to ask yourself and to talk with your teacher about. So this, that he says that in itself is an expression of our inmost request. If you understand it in this way, then that is right understanding. So it's a heart, heart practice. It's not just ear, it's also heart, body, mind. So we want to encourage ourselves and we want to encourage our everyone, our Sangha mates, everyone. Um, to practice by expressing this deep desire, this deepest vow. And when we think about doing gasho from the perspective of, or any activity from the perspective of something called perfection, what that brings up is criticism of self or other. And to be critical of yourself or other is actually a gaining idea. It's not about our inmost request, it's about trying to attain some particular state that we've decided is a, some state that we need to attain. And so we're trying to gain that state. It's really not about what our probably our inmost request is, which probably has something to do with wanting to communicate better, something to do with wanting to soften, something to do with wanting to culti cultivate compassion. So, Criticism of self and other is not the point of this. We make our best effort to learn how to do the forms because we understand that these forms are the deepest expression of our inmost request. They are a deep expression of our vow to benefit self and others. So we've been talking about the dignified behavior of a Buddha, about Dogen's quote from the dignified behavior of a Buddha. <clears throat> and that is what these forms are. are. These forms <clears throat> are the dignified behavior of a Buddha. They are the expression of a Buddha, and you are Buddha. The reason why you are motivated to make this effort is because of your Buddha nature. And this, be, this comes from this sincere, compassionate, and continuous effort, not from striving for some kind of perfection. And then, okay, so that's what I'd like to say about perfection right now. And the next thing I want to say is what lecture two was about, which is about rules. So <clears throat> following the rules, if you will, 
of our forms and the things that we do, the particularity of the things that we do, is just throwing yourself into and through the Dharma gate of the Buddha way. It's just letting go, just throwing ourselves into it. Oh, that's, that's how we do Gasha. When um, I was practicing <clears throat> with some, the month that I spent in Japan at Tsuyoji, it was with some eight or 10 other Westerners and um, some of them were from uh, Europe. And <clears throat> they had learned to do gasho like this. They did gasho like this, kind of like this. And they did it that way because that was the way they, I guess their teacher did it. Just very kind of like that. And they did not want to change. It was like they were really attached to this as a way to do gasho. Even though we were being instructed, no, we do gasho like that. But they never wanted to do that. So I would say that's a deficiency of practice. Because what are we holding on to? What are we holding on to? <clears throat> Just do gasho the way we're being asked to do gasho. And if you go somewhere else and they all say, OK, we got to do gasho some other way, then you say, OK, I'll do gasho. Well, I'm over there. I'll do gasho that way. But while I'm here, I do gasho this way. Even though you might say to yourself, well, wait a minute, this way is Dogen's way. This way is not Dogen's way. So I don't want to do this way because that's not Dogen's way. Only this way is Dogen's way. But maybe this way is not the way to do Gasho in a different situation. Maybe the compassionate, wise thing to do is something else. So then your effort is to let go, just let go. So these rules are a field that is meant to help us understand ourselves, understand our difficulties, to have them as we talked about last week. So if we sincerely make our best effort to drop the self <clears throat> and to integrate ourselves with what's happening, then this transformation is going to happen in and of itself. So we don't have to be so worried about rules. But having said that, I'm still not giving you carte blanche to do whatever you want to do. So, but the rules have a function. And, but the function is not to try to be perfect. Although I would say that it is really common, and I know this is true for myself, that when you first start, to do these practices, you want to be perfect. Like that's your goal is to be perfect. So you're just trying to, or maybe you're just trying to engage what I'm calling today your reluctant self. The part of you that doesn't want to do this, it says, oh, am I worshiping Buddha? That's a big question. If I bow and I'm facing towards the altar, am I worshiping that statue up there? And so all sorts of stuff come up. And then you should go to your teacher and say, am I worshiping that piece of stone up there? No, by the way, that's not what we're doing. But it's good to ask these questions if they come up. So, you know, these resistances, it's like it's, like it's an interactive event. And all of this stuff kind of boils up that wouldn't happen otherwise. Or you wouldn't notice it otherwise. So. But then as you continue to do the forms and incorporate the forms, they become an expression of this inmost request. They become an expression of your desire to benefit all beings. The forms themselves become integrated practice realization. They are the practice itself. They are expressing realization in concert with all beings. When you gasho, all beings gasho with you. So the last part of this quote is, when you move your head, the tips of your fingers should also be in direct alignment with the motion of your head. You must bend the upper body from the lower back and your head goes lower. As your head goes lower, the gasho mudra goes lower. So it means that you're 
It's a whole body thing that's happening here as you do gasho. So it's, according to these instructions, it's not like this, right? It's, everything's functioning together. So your whole body bends as you bow. I just say this is a little sidelight. There's a little mischievous character called Kappa in Japan. And the Kappas are kind of, they look a little bit like turtles with arms and legs. And they have a little depression. They live in streams and rivers and things in water. And they have a depression in their head. And the, the, if they get out of the water, they have the water in this depression in their head, this little bowl. And if you can get them to bow low enough that the water comes out of their bowl, they have to, they have to at that point, grant like a wish or do what you want them to do. So that's pretty interesting. I think about gasho that way. I think, oh, that's interesting. So if I can gasho low enough that the water comes out of my head, that's a good thing. You know, that's a, let's let go of the self here and just be humble. Let that water come out. So it's this whole body activity. So your whole body bends as you bow. So this is not different from what Dogen said about the dignified behavior of a Buddha. He said, that which imparts and possesses single fragments of the dignified behavior of Buddha is the whole of the cosmos in the earth and the whole of living and dying, going and coming. That which imparts and possesses single fragments. This gasho is a single fragment in the sense that it is a particular activity but that particular activity is not separate from the totality of dignified behavior of a Buddha, which by the way is the whole world functioning as the world, is the dignified behavior of the Buddha. So he says that which imparts and possesses single fragments of the dignified behavior of Buddha is the whole of the cosmos in the earth. Your gasho is the whole of the cosmos in the earth. I mean, don't mean to make you a little self-conscious here, but it is the whole being expressed through this single fragment or this activity that you're engaged in. The whole of living and dying, the whole of your living and dying, the whole of all of living and dying, the whole of coming and going, the whole of this and that being functioning, expressing itself. So you become the whole of the cosmos. You are making this utmost effort with the whole being, with your whole being in Gasho. Yet, it's nothing flashy. There's nothing flashy about it. It's just doing Gasho. That's it. You just are doing Gasho. It's not some deep, sacred, you know, magical, important event that must be done perfectly according to the rules. It is just Gasho. Let the water fall out of your head. When we bow from the waist, we don't slouch with our shoulders bent over, chest caved in. We want to be more upright. We can breathe. Our life becomes more expansive. Bowing from the waist is our whole commitment without reservation to express our practice. It is expressing our practice. It is expressing our life. It is unconstrained containment, unconstrained containment, full commitment to practice. So this, this instruction means that each part follows the whole of the activity. Your gasho is the fingers following the whole of your hand. The hand is following the whole of your head and the head is following the whole of your body. And the whole if, of the body is following the dance of what Dogen is calling the whole of the cosmos and the earth and the whole of living and dying, going and coming. So for this reason, we try to embody this teaching by engaging our whole body as we gasho, whole body and mind. This is true for every activity, whether you're sweeping, washing dishes, 
combing your hair, talking to your neighbor. It doesn't matter. But where we focus on it, if you will, as a training activity is in these formal practices that we do in the Zendo. So specifically, we let our gasho lead the whole of our activity. We don't drop the hands away from the face, our only gasho with our arms. We, this is wholehearted, concentrated effort, and it engages our body from six feet below the floor. The energy six feet below the floor. And innumerable feet above our head. It is the energy and the totality of the whole earth below and the cosmos above. So, you know, I don't think we know exactly what this means. And I don't think we know exactly what it means sometimes to do this activity. Like we don't know in our body what it means. So I'll tell you a little story. When Jaku and I were at the Japanese Soto Zen conference last year, we were participating in a ceremony, uh, the one where we fanned the, the Hartru, the Prajnaparamita Sutra. And one of the American priests who was there uh, was helping by being Jishun, bringing up the incense. And he didn't know how to do gasho from his waist. He only knew how to kind of do gasho like this, like kind of. I guess it was kind of like that, right? Just kind of like moving from the chest, but not gashoing from the waist. And uh, so you might think that a priest would know how to do this kind of gasho, but sometimes in the United States, we're not very well trained uh, in how to do forms. So Akiba Roshi, who's the bishop for North American Soto Zen in the Japanese school, he was trying to explain to this priest how to do this. He'd say, no, no, you have to bend, you know, like more and more. And he still couldn't get it, what more and more was. And so finally, Akiba came up and actually bent him over, like put his hand on his back and bent him over so that he was doing gasho from his waist. Does this mean that, that he was a bad priest? the guy who couldn't you know, quite get what was, he was being asked to do. So it just means he needed a little help in understanding what it was that he was supposed to be doing. But because his desire and sincerity of practice was so clearly there, that Akiba Roshi could come and help him. At that point, this priest and Akiba Roshi were expressing practice realization and both of their inmost requests together to do this practice, to engage the whole of the single fragment of the dignified behavior of a Buddha in that ceremony. So there was no criticism, there was no scolding, just this deep desire to learn how to express a form that's about gratitude and compassion how to express gratitude and compassion in that moment. So when we do these forms together, when we do service together, this is a kind of elegant dance. But you know, I've never done one of these ceremonies in which everyone did everything perfectly. <laughs> it doesn't happen. Yet everyone is perfect because of their sincere desire to do it together perfectly in the midst of our imperfection and that we are open to learning and we're open to making this ceremony a living mandala. That's what service is. Service is a living mandala of a ritual blessing. That's the function of service. And this living mandala of ritual blessing is like when pebbles hit the water and ripples outward and inward as Buddha's way. So when we do this, it is an expression of our intention to benefit all beings. That's what we're up to. So 
When we do these formal activities like gasho, it's about learning the form of gasho itself or whatever the activity is. And it's about making friends between our body and our minds and the activity, the ritual itself. We're asking our body and our mind to be aware of itself and to carry the practice through itself. And also, Gasho, in this case, talking, we're talking about Gasho, it expresses this unity of body, mind, self, and other. This practice expresses unity of body, mind, self, and other. It is the unity of the earth, the person, things, precepts, intention, all together. It is the world, as Dogen says in Uji, it is the world making the world. And that activity in and of itself is an altruistic activity. So at first you might feel self-conscious uh, and you might, might need to become more aware of how the various parts of your body are interacting, are connected or are not connected with each other. But you know, it's really like learning to ride a bike or learning to drive a car. You know, when you first start to drive, I don't know about you, but for me, there I am in an absolutely huge, giant parking lot, and I couldn't figure out how to turn the corner. <laughs> now, do I think about turning a corner? No, it's like I, some part of me says, we're going to turn the corner here, and you know, miraculously, it all happens without much effort. So at first, we're really aware of the parts. We're really aware of how we're learning and making this best effort. And then after the while, it just sort of integrates itself and happens automatically and we don't think about it. Now in a fascicle that Dogen wrote called Ken Butsu, Seeing the Buddha, he said, he said, now, ever since bringing forth the mind of Bodhi and setting out to engage in the conduct on tiptoe, our concentrated effort in pursuing the way, as well as our complete mastery of enlightenment by all things, not enlightenment, but by being enlightened by all things, are all the living eye, the living bones and marrow of Buddhas. Thus all the worlds of self and all the directions of other over here and over there are equally the concentrated effort of seeing Buddha. And then he says, having once personally seen the Buddha is paying respect with joining the palms and making inquiry. Mm -hmm. Joining the palms and making inquiry is seeing the Buddha. So I'll read that one more time. Now, ever since bringing forth the mind of Bodhi and setting out to engage in the conduct on tiptoe, and I take that to mean to really engage with your wholehearted effort, to engage the conduct on tiptoe, our concentrated effort in pursuit of the way, as well as our complete mastery of enlightenment by being enlightened by all things, are all the living eye, the living bones and marrow of Buddhas. Thus all the worlds of self and all the directions of other over here and over there are equally the concentrated effort of seeing Buddha. And then later he says, having once personally seen Buddha is paying respects with joining the palms and making inquiry. All of this is, is all of this is embedded in the simple act of making gasho. All of this is embedded in the simple act of anything that you are doing. Now, I say to you, having heard this, please forget what you have heard and please forget who you are. Just perform with gasho, with the spirit of your inmost request to benefit all beings, nothing more. So I hope this is encouraging to you. I hope it encourages you to fully engage with formal practice. 
We can all do this together, whether we are beginners, whether we have been practicing for years and years, we all do this together and express this, in this case, through our formal practice. So remember that forms are like learning something new, and there are those specific ways of doing it seem difficult at first. But as we become <clears throat> freed from our constraints, these ways become incorporated into our very being, and we don't think about them so much. And then we are really free to use them at will. So this is the meaning of forgetting self, other, gasho, forgetting as practice realization. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.